Hello there and welcome to this video. This is a bit of a electronic project video for uh, a project that I've decided to work on, which is this light here. Now this is what is an emergency light. They are fitted in public places, uh, restaurants, pubs, bars, train stations, all, all kinds of places where if the electric went out, the lighting would go off and these would come on. So, for example, it's plugged in here. If I unplug it, it's lit up. And these things work so you've got lighting to get out of the place safely. Oh, that's how they're supposed to work. They get hooked up to the lighting circuit and then when the power goes out, these come on. Whilst the power is on, they charge. So, they are designed to last for at least three hours. This one, as you can see here, it says three hour duration. And this is a new LEC model. It's a used one. It's come out of a, some place. It's something I picked up a while ago. And you can see, obviously, it's got the wire hardwired into it. This is what I've done and put it onto a plug because I've been using it as a work light. It's quite handy for that kind of thing. But obviously, it's not ideal to have the wire attached to this thing when you're trying to use it. So I've decided I'm going to adjust this thing. And also, you can't leave it unplugged. Otherwise, it just stays on and goes flat. So I have to leave it plugged in and charging all the time. So I've got a couple of ideas to get around that. Firstly, I'm going to install a power socket on it, which is this one here. This is an IEC, uh, like a kettle type socket, as people commonly call them. Like you have on computers and things, and it's quite a standard plug. You just have a, a normal lead here that goes into that. And that's how that works. So I'm going to mount this on this. Probably on the end. One of the ends. Most likely. Seems the most sensible place to put it. I've then got a switch here. Which is an on off power switch. This I took out of a Virgin Media uh, cable TV box. Which I stripped down for the hard drive, and I, I obviously I keep all the pieces. So this I'm going to use to switch the battery connection on and off. So that way when I unplug it, the battery won't run down and stay on. So I can turn the light off with this. I've then also got a fuse holder here, which I uh, scavenged off a, a unit. But this came off as well, it was a, a little extension socket thing. But yeah, there's a fuse holder here with a 5 amp fuse in it, and I'm going to also integrate that as well, as it should be fused. This should be fused internally, but I'm going to put an external fuse as well. So that way, hopefully if the fuse goes, it will be the external one. But anyway, I'm going to have to uh, unplug this now, strip it down, and uh, go from there really. Because I can't do anything with it in its current state. The top does just clip off. In fact, I think most of it clips off. The one thing you have to be careful of when working on one of these is that it is live even when it's not plugged in because of the battery. So you have to be quite careful on it until you've uh, unplugged the battery that's inside. This is a, uh, a fluorescent tube light that's in them. You get LED ones now but this is an older one. It just takes a 8 uh, watt tube and these clips are very tight. Okay. So we've got the front cover off, put that over there, I'm going to take the tube out now, like so, I'll just put the tube in the front cover at the moment, and now obviously it does say uh, caution the luminaire may be live when lamps are not operating, so don't touch the pins, because obviously you could turn this thing off to change the bulb, but it isn't off, it's still running on battery power. So, you just got to kind of pop this front cover off. Watch you not to touch any electronics under here, which are all here. Put the cover over there. Okay, now uh, you can see the guts of the unit. There's where the mains feed is coming in. We've got the batteries here. These are the wires that connect to the pins for the tube on both sides and then we've got the mains circuitry to charge the unit and also the unit the circuitry to drive the lamp and everything it's all contained on one board 
So, I'm going to unplug the battery's positive now. Being careful not to touch any other electronics in here. So that's unplugged. You can see the uh, green light has also gone off because it's not charging anymore. And now I'm also going to unplug it. So it's now de-energised. I'm going to also unplug the negative terminal of the battery. Oh, I might need some pliers on that. Okay, so there we go. Both the positive and negative are off now. So the battery is fully disconnected. I'm just going to remove this and put it out of the way. You can see it's just two cells sort of joined together. They're rechargeable. So we're going to install a switch probably on the positive side here. This switch will probably go somewhere and then obviously it's going to go on the outside so you can turn it on and off. I'm going to get this main cable out of here right now. I'm just going to loosen the gland. And I need a little screwdriver to loosen these connections. Okay, sorted. So let's take the mains flex out. Okay, so there's the mains flex out. And we can put this out of the way because we don't need this anymore. So I can see the light itself, obviously there's this hole here, I'll probably try and find something to plug it. Uh, I can't remove these lamp holders, they are fixed in place looking at it. I thought they would have snapped out somehow. Uh, and then obviously I need to decide where stuff's going to go now. So these are all the wires connecting to the lamp holders that go down there. Okay, so after spending a while um, just having a look over this thing, I've put the battery back in now by the way. Uh, I've tucked the wire down there for the negative and plugged it straight in. I've put these out of the way for the end of the tube and tucked them down here. And I've also worked out that this push connector that would go straight to the board does fit onto this switch quite snugly. So that's good news. So I'm thinking I might not cut into this cable because the length on it isn't enough for it to plug into the board and come over to the side for a switch unless I put the switch on this side. Now I do want to try and put a switch and the fuse holder and the power input on the same side together and I was going to choose the side with the light on and the writing just because that seems like the logical place to put them. So I'd have that there like that possibly, the fuse holder there, and then the switch for the battery power here maybe. So inside that would have the room for the connector to sit back. I would just hardwire from this side of the switch to this terminal. And then the fuse holder can go here somewhere and the power input here because there's not really anything in this section that is likely to interfere with. So it keeps the mains input and the fuse out the way nicely down here. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, and then I'll plug this hole slash fill it in with something. So there's not a big hole in the back of it. Not that it really makes any difference anyway whether that hole's there. But yeah, I'm going to have to get me drill and uh, try and make some holes in this and make a start and see how we go. Okay, so I've dedicated to it. And I've made the first bit of progress. So this is the uh, power inlet here. And I've made, drilled a hole out and then filed it. And that just pops straight on in there. Like that. Beautifully. So I need to drill the holes to screw this in next. And then also put the fuse holder in probably at the side of it here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've now got the fuse holder done. As you can see it's installed there. It's uh, gone in quite easily. The nuts on the back of it. 
There's the fuse. We'll just pop that in. And there you go. So the next thing is the battery power switch, which I'm going to put here, that way or that way, probably that way I think, but then it's um, sideways as opposed to going up. I don't know, let's have a see. Okay, so I've got the switch installed, the fuse holder and the power socket. You can see them there. I'll put it in that way, then I can connect the battery onto the and the output there. So uh, it's away from the high voltage stuff. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to now put well try and find some crimps to make a little jump lead between here and here. I can plug the battery onto here then. And I also need to get some mains cable and some heat shrink to do the connections from here over to the PCB and the fuse holder. So I'm gonna go and dig out the parts required for this. Okay, so I've now got the powered input socket wired and heat shrink with uh, some flex. This is just the, the flex that I've took the covering off because it doesn't need it on inside here. So um, this is ready to pop in. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to wire the live through the fuse and then out to here. The neutral and F are just going to go straight to the board. So I've uh, made a bit of progress. These are all hooked up now for the mains. It goes via the fuse. It's all heat shrinked into the board there with a little bit of excess on them. And then you'll also notice I've got the wire here for the switch. This is uh, just a piece of 1mm twin and earth from uh, a lighting cable just because it's red. So uh, that'll match the red on the battery. And that's heat shrinks and soldered onto the switch. And I did find a crimp there for the positive connection out of this um, car USB Chinese thing that's for an upcoming project so I just used that because I will just be soldering the connections on this so now it's ready to fit the battery and test which I'm going to do now okay so that's the battery installed and plugged in it's connected onto the switch here and then that's connected straight to the board the jumper wires in, sort of tucked out the way. So I need to put the tube in and then we can test this thing. Okay, so I've got the tube in. Just need to turn it. There we go. So now if I turn this switch on, in theory it should light. Well, hey, brilliant. So then if I plug this in, it should start to charge and the light go off. Okay. So I've got a lead, I'm just going to plug this in, I haven't got enough hands really for this. And it's gone off, and it's charging. Brilliant. And then if I turn this off, I imagine it will stop charging. Yep. used it then. Turning it on with the mains plugged in, the battery being connected. But yeah, I need to get this thing back together now anyway. Okay, so that's the unit back together completely now. You can see all the connections here on the side, the switch, the fuse, the power input. Didn't plug that hole, uh, I will do that at some point in the future, probably. But it's no biggie. So that's it. I'm going to uh, give this a little try, so let's put it in somewhere dark. Okay, we're under my desk with the cable mess now. I'm just going to put the light on. And there we go. Brilliant. So yeah, I hope you found this video interesting. You enjoyed it, learnt something, or it inspired you to do something like this yourself. I mean, by all means, if you've got something like this that's likely to be going in the bin and being thrown away, Make something of it. Don't throw it out. So uh, please leave a like if you like this little project video. Leave a comment if you've got any questions. And subscribe for future random videos like this. Thanks for watching.